Hi everyone, and welcome to our talk on passenger comfort and anxiety as physiological responses to autonomous driving styles. My name is Nicole Dillon, and I will be presenting this work along with my co-author, Marco Ilyevsky. In a world where autonomous vehicles have been progressing rapidly to fully driverless autonomy, challenges still exist when it comes to their universal acceptance. For example, a 2019 AAA survey showed that 60 to 80% of drivers still expressed fear of riding in a fully autonomous vehicle. But even if this was not the case, even if there was already widespread acceptance, there still exists a second problem. People have individual driving preferences. While some prefer a more defensive approach to driving, others may tend towards a less defensive style. The autonomous vehicles today, however, only consider fixed preset driving styles that are primarily aimed at satisfying safety constraints. There is a large body of work studying the interactions between humans and autonomous vehicles. And most of this research tends to focus on the interaction of the safety driver. However, autonomous vehicles are quickly progressing towards full autonomy where drivers are not really required. Given the public sphere and varying individual driving style preferences, how would passengers really perceive this new and fully automated driving behavior, knowing all the while that there is no human driver to fall back on? And even when the passenger has been the main research focus, most work has been conducted either within the safety net of a simulator or as a Wizard of Oz experiment. But these methods have a major drawback. They lack the external validity for realistic motion within an autonomous vehicle. The naturalistic field studies that do exist primarily use self-reported scores as measures of comfort and anxiety. It is important, however, to also study the physiological responses that involuntarily arise due to discomfort or anxiety about the driving style. To address these issues, we designed a passenger study that aimed at bridging the gap between lab naturalistic studies as well as between self-reported scores and their corresponding physiological measurements. This study was designed using the autonomous vehicle at the University of Waterloo, known as the Autonomous. To study passenger responses to different driving styles, two aspects of the driving style of the Autonomous were varied and measured. The distance between it and the test vehicle, and the acceleration and jerk experienced by the vehicle and its passengers. The Autonomous was programmed to have two driving variations. An aggressive driving, and defensive driving style. These variations to driving style were then related to the physiological responses captured from the participants, which included their eye movement entropy, heart rate, and galvanic skin response. To measure the participants' eye movement entropy, they were tasked with watching a video playing on a phone in front of them throughout the study. Eye tracking glasses were then used to calculate the number of times their gaze left the area of interest. A heart rate monitor was clipped to their earlobe, and electrodes were firmly attached to their fingers using Velcro straps to measure their heart rate and skin response respectively. This study was conducted on a closed cord circuit in Waterloo, Canada. An additional Lexus served as a human control test vehicle. This experiment had four trials, each consisting of four events. Each event attempted to isolate a particular driving style variable independently. We had a passing event which measured the participant's response to variations in the lateral distance from the vehicle. The smaller the distance, the more aggressive the driving style. The stopping at an intersection event measured the longitudinal acceleration and jerk. This event studied both the deceleration during braking as well as the acceleration away from the intersection. There was a second stop event behind a stationary test vehicle, primarily aimed at isolating the longitudinal distance from that vehicle. The smaller the longitudinal distance, the more aggressive the driving style. This event inevitably confounded the distance with the acceleration and jerk during the stop. Finally, we had a turning event in which a participant responded to the lateral acceleration and jerk during a sharp turn. Two sets of self-reported scores of comfort and anxiety were collected. The first consisted of verbal on-the-fly questions that we asked after each event, these questions captured the rating of comfort and anxiety on a scale of 1 to 10. And the second was a competitive state anxiety inventory 2 questionnaire. 
that we ask at the end of each trial. We use the somatic subscale of this questionnaire, which ranged from 9 to 36 points. We recruited 20 participants, 10 males, 10 females, aged between 19 and 64 years of age. A pre-questionnaire showed that 70% of them preferred defensive driving styles, and most had much higher average trust in autonomous vehicles. This trust level could possibly be attributed to the fact that participants were primarily students from a technical university. We ran an initial analysis to understand the role that each event played in the passenger's physiological response. We carried out this analysis independent of the underlying driving style and found that stopping events significantly raised passenger response levels more so than sharp turns and closely passing by a parked vehicle. This result demonstrates how critical a given event is on passenger comfort irrespective of the driving style. We then analyzed the driving style parameters themselves. This included individual variation to longitudinal and lateral components of acceleration, jerk, and distance to the agent vehicle. The goal of this analysis was to understand which of these driving style parameters most significantly affect a passenger's physiological response, and hence their comfort or anxiety. We immediately found that the presence of a lead vehicle on its own tends to raise response levels. Expectedly, the magnitude of longitudinal acceleration and jerk also increased the response level in either direction. But more interesting to note was the magnified nature of this effect in the presence of a lead vehicle. In fact, not only the presence, but also the proximity of the lead vehicle itself moderates the effect of acceleration and jerk. In other words, the closer participants were to the car ahead, the more uncomfortable they were about the stop. We ran a final analysis on the self-report scores in which we related them to each of the physiological responses we measured. The goal here was to validate the ability of these physiological signals to reflect the self-reported comfort and anxiety scores. As expected, we found that galvanic skin response was a significant predictor of comfort and anxiety. Heart rate was also found to be similarly correlated, though the effect was not significant. These results served as a confirmation that we were indeed measuring comfort and anxiety, and they offer further insight into the physiological measurements that can be used in future in-vehicle studies. We will now combine both our qualitative and quantitative results and put it all together. Stopping events were the most uncomfortable events we studied. This effect was further magnified by the presence of a lead vehicle. Not only was this presence a strong indicator, but the proximity also played a large role. This, unsurprisingly, was also confirmed during participant interviews, where the majority, 13 out of 20, 14 out of 20, reported stopping at an intersection as among the most uncomfortable events. Jerkiness of the driving style also played a large role in participants' discomfort, with some participants stating it was akin to teaching their children how to drive, and yet others felt that discomfort came both from hard braking and the revving of the engine during acceleration. Even with an aggressive driving style, turning was not found to cause much discomfort. This was confirmed both by the qualitative interviews in which only 8 out of the 20 participants expressed any discomfort in the trading event, and in the quantitative data analysis where lateral acceleration was not a significant predictor of physiological signals and thus comfort. The passing of a vehicle was another event that caused little to no discomfort as only four of the participants claimed to feel any discomfort during this event. Finally, and most importantly, individual preferences depicted as the ID random effect were found to be significant across all responses. This solidified evidence that passengers do indeed have individual comfort levels, which if violated can cause anxiety. This leads us to the major takeaways from the study. The type of event really mattered. Stopping events behind stationary object had the greatest response to comfort and anxiety. 
This should be studied in greater detail in future studies. The presence of a lead vehicle, along with its proximity, modulated the effect of deceleration behind that vehicle. Galvanic skin response was found to be the most significant in predicting comfort, making it a potential candidate for other autonomous vehicle studies. Lastly, and most importantly, individual responses vary significantly. This means that two different passengers can have different responses to the same driving style. So how do these results really help us? For one, by understanding which driving style parameters affect passenger comfort, we can introduce passenger-specific driving styles that accommodate individual preferences. We can then avoid relying purely on fixed presets that could otherwise be too aggressive or maybe even too defensive. We can even take this a step further and adapt the driving style in an on-the-fly manner. To this end, we could use unobtrusive physiological measurements, such as heart rate and skin response, as implicit sources of passenger feedback to inform changes to the driving style. Multimodal feedback can then be used to communicate these on-the-fly changes back to the passenger and help keep them in the loop. Thus, by catering to individual driving preferences and responding to changes in comfort, we can build systems that actively accommodate the passenger's individual needs instead of relying on a one-size-fits-all approach. As a result, we can help reduce the fears associated with riding in a fully autonomous vehicle and consequently help pave the way to a more widespread embrace of this rapidly evolving technology. Potential directions for future work include exploring additional events such as cut-in and more complex intersection events, as well as events involving pedestrians. We can also investigate additional driving style parameters such as velocity and time to collision. We can adjust our models to control for weather and understand its impact on passenger comfort, as well as account for unexpected events such as emergency takeovers or obstacles. Additionally, we can begin investigating methods that adaptively adjust the driving style in an on-the-fly manner while considering additional difficulties such as accommodating the needs of multiple passengers in a single vehicle. As we reach the end of our talk, we would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone involved in supporting us through this project. Specifically, we would like to thank our co-authors, as well as the University of Waterloo, for all the help and resources they provided.